Tanqua Artscape 2023. So thanks, Gobus, for your time. It would be great if you could give us a short introduction of who you are, what you are doing when you are not here at the Tanqua. When I'm back home, um, I'm a full-time sculptor. I work mainly in wood and I'm based in Observatory Cape Town. Um, I have a space, a kind of live-in studio at the moment, um, which I find very, very conducive to work. Um, I share it with my partner Karen and three cats. What brought you here? How did you hear about the program and then what brought you here? Um, I, somewhere between 2019 and 2020, uh, well, 2020, I had a lot of time to sit and look at things <laughs> or look for um, and to focus on other aspects of one's life or development. Um, so I saw, hey, a Tonkwa residency, that's really great. Um, I know the area from, I'm familiar with the area from participating in Africa Burn for quite a few years, quite um, part of a collective called Fata Morgana, and we built large um, installations or sculptures that burn uh, with a kind of a kinetic um, aspect to it. Um, so the residency would be, or I would think it would be a nice way to reconnect with the place that without the group that I was with and also kind of a, a personal connection or reconnection to the place um, and also then to explore one's creativity or just be in the space without having a festival happening around you. So what is your connection with the space here, with uh, the surroundings? Sure, that's, that's quite a question. Um, I think there are quite a few connections. Um, I so. can't say only one thing. Um, the vastness of it, um, that's, I feel drawn to that. I don't know how one could say that you're, um, drawn to something that almost like a, a smallness in you when you see the vastness. So maybe that, that the smallness in me needs to connect with that. Um, the stones, um, I've, I've always been interested in stones and rocks and, kind of to walk on the land you feel you can kind of imagine what it was or how it came to be um, I guess those are two connections that I have mm. or feel and also that it's quiet uh, that I appreciate a lot and I'm thankful that one can have so much quiet around you yeah you're now coming back without the festival noise how does it feel? What is the difference? Um, it feels good. Uh, there's not an expectation of delivering something for or being part of a crew. But firstly, it's not being part of a crew. So there's no um, kind of uh, duty that you have to perform. And there's no expectation. There's also, so there's less stress. It's not a stressful um, situation. So definitely it's much calmer and yeah, well, actually relaxing in some ways, but also very challenging because then there's time to um, there's time to contemplate and to actually find what what it is that you need to do. So beyond just making work, there's work that you can do in yourself and on yourself. So it's also kind of quiet time to grow. That mm. is what I would say the, the main difference is between going to a festival under severe deadline pressure, <laughs> <laughs> anxiety about <laughs> getting the thing done, and the scores of people and the noise and the, mm. yeah, the kind of overwhelming noise and I don't know what for. I mean, how can, what grows in that environment? But why did you go then? The challenge to be here. The best part of the festival was coming two weeks in advance, having this, <laughs> <laughs> similar to this, working, um, having time with your friends, a kind of camaraderie. Um, and then like when you're really like, oh, can I just, just disappear for two days and come back after everyone's gone? Yeah. 
I mean, you are working here pretty much on your own, but still there is the collective, right, of yes. the residency. Yes. How does this <clears throat> impact, influence, or inspire, um, uh, disturb you? Well, I would say it's it's interesting because everyone is able to share what their progress or not progress is and what they find like and I think the sharing is probably the most interesting part. If I were totally here on my own, like who would I share it with? Um and how would I then also know to look out for certain things? So the sharing is a very interesting part of this. But there's also enough time, space and quiet to work undisturbed. I quite like the group aspect of it. I'm not, it doesn't feel like I'm back in school. <laughs> Even though you would call it a learning space? Yeah? Yes, I mean, it doesn't have to, um, yeah, school is probably a, quite a loaded word. Very loaded. <laughs> <laughs> And almost negatively loaded. Yeah, this, the idea is that um, you're being formed into a uniform product for consumption. <laughs> That's probably what schools are, factories of this, this type of person. Yes. And I don't really think, maybe that's the loaded and um, negative connection to it. So what are you learning here? I guess, most of all, to, to be thankful, to be grateful, and to allow a kindness towards others and towards oneself. The practical challenge of making the sculpture, that's always going to be there, but um, the environment is so that <laughs> necessitates... <laughs> necessitates. It is a difficult world. But it necessitates um, kindness with oneself and with whoever is in your space and surrounding. So, mm. I mean, a harsh place makes one kind. An easy place can make one very unkind very quickly. Mm. Or where everything is so comfortable and so controlled and where the smallness in you becomes too big. You look pretty organized there in your in your studio, in the in the <laughs> Tankwa studio. You applied with an idea? Are you still stuck to it? Are there any changes? Um there could be. I mean sometimes having a, a certain idea, uh doesn't allow you to grow or sticking to it to be all the preparations and the things that went in were like oh i need to go and make something with you so it's like there is still a kind of a thing to deliver and uh, um, a fulfillment of a promise um, but the promise seems to change or the premise of the promise seems to change almost the work is a byproduct what is now being created in the organized space um, that the kind of uh, echo of the preparations that is where the play comes in and how I usually or maybe I don't know if everybody works like that or some people only the magic happens just before the deadline <laughs> that's when um, I guess when we realize there's only so much time to get the thing to finish and then one is um, probably in a heightened sense of inspiration probably a little bit crazy a bit manic by that time but um, there that's a space where then you have all the building blocks and you can build the thing that you need to build mm. um, so it's kind of building building on top um, like steps so that one can plan you can only plan for what and provide for what your needs are and then you can use those things and something that surprises you hopefully <laughs> will materialize <laughs> yeah so yeah a bit of alchemy a bit of um yeah i don't know if it's hard to say what what that is but it's generally creating the surprise but methodically working toward <laughs> having, having the stuff to make the surprise with yeah. like planning the meal <laughs> yeah 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 that's actually quite a nice comparison planning a meal 
So the last um, thing, Kobe, is mm -hmm. uh, if you would use five words to describe the environment, the surrounding here, what would be these five words? I would start with vast. Open, hard, soft, and life-giving. That's interesting, life-giving. Can you fill this a little bit okay. up um, with words, life-giving? Beautiful. It energizes. The, I think the vastness energizes one. Um, it shrinks the smallness or makes it grow. And I guess it's uh, scale-wise. It shows you the immensity of what surrounds you. Um, and it also makes you see how insignificant and even significant one can be. So I guess it's, it's a, a, a revitalizing influence that the place has. And I'd say life-giving, is it sounds better than revitalizing. Much better. It sounds like we're selling sugar water at revitalizing. <laughs> we don't. Only <laughs> no, in the no, breaks. No. <laughs> <laughs> Only in the commercial breaks. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank you. Monica.